Yeah, and speaking of more of, definitely more of what's coming next. What? Oh, yes. Yes, this. <laughs> what? I, haven't, I didn't get... I haven't oh, read I didn't it get either, either, but, yeah. Oh, I also need to... I need to stop doing this thing where I, I take shadow breaths and breathe in my chest, because now my fucking ribs are killing me. Oh, it's like I can't get oxygen up in there. Yeah, just breathe. <sighs> breathe. You know when you have to do those stretches, like open up your chest? It's kind of like that, man. Mm-hmm. You, actually, I know what it is. Yep. My nose is so blocked. I am. I'm. But I'm a big fucking mouth breather. I haven't been able to do nothing about it. Should do that. Awful. Like yeah, yeah. Hi, hi. I'd love to breathe with my diaphragm through my nose. Well, this doesn't fucking work. Can't get oxygen. I haven't been able to get proper O2 there for basically all my days. <laughs> all my days. All my days. We got a chunky tear set dev insight post. We do indeed. Um. So yeah. Uh, Scarizard and Scald shared their thoughts on the community council forums. All right. Hey, these are all really good questions, and I'll do my best to answer in a way that's hopefully transparent enough to provide some insight and not so vague as to be frustrating. A few disclaimers. Uh, I was only personally responsible for a fraction of this initiative. I'm saying the rogue DK, part of Warlock, uh, you know, with, with Frozo. So I'm going to try to center on my experiences to open the door for my other teammates to engage their own perspectives. What's the goal? Mm. sort of talks about the perception expectations history namely how do we make good on those implicit promises without players feeling let down by their return uh yeah uh, without creating unrealistic design goals for ourselves to stack up against this whole post is going to get real philosophical by the way so sorry slash you're welcome lamau <laughs> Ah, good. Actual humans talking. This is what yep. we want to see. Mm -hmm. Tier sets have always been powerful upgrades to your character, but the idea that they've uh, significantly changed your gameplay or enhanced your fantasy is more of a modern thing as far mm. as WoW's lifetime is concerned. Even going back to uh, Wrath and Kata eras, the design of tier sets was clearly adhering to a different set of expectations than what players had to have today. Yeah, I, I think so, actually, because... Um, <laughs> Brandon, a million percent, yes, that's my experience. Uh, yeah, I think, I don't want to talk out my ass, but it, Siege of Orgrimmar is when it happened big. Because uh, they were testing future mechanics via Siege I of Orgrimmar think trinkets. so. Well, that was trinkets, yeah. Why, why is that with class sets? What am I? <laughs> you're just, sorry, you're, you're I off, actually like, may have hit the point of delirium here. You're off on one, same uh, as Yeah, trinkets are different. <laughs> yep. Uh, but it is like it, it, it's a lot more modern um, era, and hey, it was always exciting. Um, anyway, yep. it's absolutely true that instance, uh, some instances of raw stat additions like resource regen fundamentally change rotations for some classes. You got to use certain spells at different frequencies. But for the most part, they were just flat upgrades that didn't interact with anything in your character, and in many cases, they weren't even unique. I want to say, as far back as, yeah, Mist slash Wad, it was common for some classes or role types to share functionally similar uh, two-pieces or four-piece bonuses. Even among the expansions, though, it was common for a few set bonuses to rise to the top, yes, of the conversation. As a Frost DK main, I say Nighthold, big surprise, made the biggest impact on me, but every class respect had a few defining memories of a design uh, that was so base, or sorry, that was so cool that they made the entire patch better as a result. Some even ended up baseline uh, talents or rift on slash referenced uh, legendaries, conduits, etc. down the line. Our goal with 9.2 was to try and make sets that evoked these responses as much as possible. So that said, brought some of our goals for 9.2. Um, set bonuses had to do any, or if possible, all of the following. Hmm. Meaningfully change your specs rotation. Enhance, enhance your specs core fantasy, or give other uh, elements of that fantasy um, you know, the space to shine. Hmm. Enhance a specs mechanical identity or niche, and then D. Secret goal. Hmm. As these sets do not exist in a vacuum, introduce bonuses that work well with the metagame system's presence so they feel intuitive and synergistic rather than disruptive and obtuse. This one's hard to get perfect, but still a goal. Hmm. Yep. Uh, however, the ultimate goal is that by adhering to these guidelines, we have a greater chance uh, now and in future tier sets to make those lasting gameplay memories that people tell stories about. Yeah, here's where I'm going to specifically highlight that uh, Scarlet said worked on part of the Warlock stuff with Frozo. Looking at the 
Aflock stuff, especially after the recent rework, it or the like changes, it looks really fucking good. Nice. Like, um, it's basically malefic rupture will ra rapture. I always say rupture instead of rupture because I I imagine like rupturing dots, but it's rapture. Malefic rapture will extend dots. Also, while all your dots are up, you can get you get your filler gives you a chance to get a free one. And it's this like loop that just really super doubles down on Aflock being I'm gonna spread dots and then explode them when you have less time spreading them and more time just exploding them overall. It feels really cool, and I think that's the one where like that pretty much massively hits all three in a way so i think that's like a really good idea and you can see where that like works because obviously a lot of the time i'll you know i'll look for ones that i think are not very interesting but the aflock one i was reading about today i was like you know what that seems like it really hits all three of those very well so you know kind of mad props honestly yeah mad props um, i think for the class specific nitty gritty maybe we should gloss over as yes yeah um, but he says lots lots of you know how are these chosen well lots of iteration with the guiding star of those principles um yeah so you know for us we chose slash assign classes based on comfort and generally speaking who is the most passionate about which ideas from there we just or you know we, we'd each um just show off our ideas give and take feedback on the designs and tweak them until we like them enough to show off in one big blast as we did in the november ptr i think time is fake yep big feel <laughs> Uh, I think for 36 bonuses, our team had a pretty good reception, generally speaking, which made me happy uh, to see knowing how much work uh, was put into the whole package. Great. And uh, if we yeah. circle also for that. Bonuses like these not only let us test the water to see what you like and don't like, but also open the floor to give set texture against uh, one another as we move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, a bonus that was heavily uh, yes, heavily interacting with X or Y might focus on a completely different part of the spec in the future, which really taps into the depth of uh, our combat and classes over time. Yeah. I could probably be here for hours talking how cool I personally find the sets or how they achieve the goals, but I'll probably cut this part of the post short. My last <laughs> comment is that it's also important to have a diversity of bonuses. That naturally comes with having different designers play off each other with their own, or playing, um, yeah, off each other with their own styles. But it's also important to note that something that may not work for you personally, a crunchy numbers focus bonus that gives you a clear mechanical output, or higher fantasy stuff like uh, some of Warlock's creating uh, new such additional demons, uh, may absolutely work for others. So we're aiming to create a solid uh, legwork for future uh, set bonuses and designers to give a you know, big variety of experiences. Mm -hmm. I'd say that the more number crunchy ones tend to be a bit more boring. Yeah, it depends. At least by that, yeah. I mean, that sort of tips off what sort of player I am. Yeah, it kind of depends on what it does for how you play the game or how you, like, the actual feeling of your spec goes. Because there's times where you get, like, you get, like, another ability fits in somewhere nicely and it just feels perfect. Like, you get that rhythm based on how you're, like, playing that feels really good. But then you get ones that are just like, eh, this doesn't really feel like anything. It's just more damage. And it doesn't have a massive impact. And then there's the high fantasy ones. Where you're like, well, this this looks kind of cooler. But if I'm looking at the damage meter, it doesn't matter. So I think it's a case of it would be perfect if they could get ones that do both in a way. But obviously, I guess that's pretty difficult to do overall. But Yeah. Um, as hmm. for how strong, TLDR, about as strong as legendaries. And they should be in relative amounts with each other. Good sense it depends fantastic acquisition now this does get interesting hmm. another this is another one that's hard to say uh definitely many of us weren't at blizzard or working on wow when old tier sets were around hmm. that's you know loads of them are there within the last few years yep you know lots of turnover and the game has changed since then as well generally not for the better which is why we invested in making uh tier sets this time uh this time which is why we invested in making tier sets this time uh, feel uh, really integrated to the overall, um, yeah, the overall end game experience. That is to say, obtainable in the Great Vault, which didn't exist back then, and from non-rating activities. This one's going to come across as vague, but that's because honestly, we're trying a lot of new things that weren't true of previous tier sets. So to say, uh, definitively one way or the other might end up being a broken promise. That said, it feels right to us that something that's been iconic for WoW's gameplay is achievable by anyone who plays even 
players who join late or swap classes mid-tier, which is the big goal of the creation catalyst. There'll be more info on that soon, so we won't go too deeply, but they recognized that if players heard tier sets were back and rushed to play 9.2 and found it impossible to get them because they couldn't find a raiding guild or something, that might be a negative experience, even if it's similar to how they worked in the past. So basically, TLDR, they're trying shit out, and uh, they look forward to continuing to try shit out in the future. Cool. Yeah. I think that's a very, very good approach to kind of go, well, this isn't just for people who are in raiding guilds and raiding regularly. This experience, this core part of what we're working on isn't been wasted. Which is, you know, obviously you go, well, that's very economical of you, as opposed to the player experience driven. But there's a way it can be absolutely both. And in this case, I think it is, which is fucking yeah. sick. Good job. Are active effect here sets ever considered? So, you know, getting a button or like a sort of a big change like that. Yeah. Not really. Actives have their place, like some special weapons or trinkets, but uh, often come with trade-offs for us design-wise that don't feel right for tier sets. They tend to be harder to use for the average player, but incredibly potent as skill level increases due to compressing slash uh, overlapping their effects within certain you know, buff windows for multiplicative effects. This is where I'd say, please fix that. Uh, Make your big cooldown 5% or 10%. Just do what FF does. The, honestly, okay, I'm yeah. out. See these burst windows? Fuck them all into the into space. Get rid of them. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep, I completely agree. I can't believe it, but there you go. Yep. I do not like this whole everything's a buff window, John Madden. And that said, uh, FF14 Savage is tuned around John Maddening those things. Yeah, but it's tuned around groups doing a lot of 5% together as opposed to yeah. what happens to... Because uh, even I... You know, I was talking shit but not wanting to grind out my Renown earlier. I have actually been like sort of slowly making progress in when I could be bothered to log in. And the other day, in Corthia, I pulled a whole pack of mobs as Rep Paladin. I press wings, I hit Divine Toll, I Divine Storm once or twice, I Wake of Ashes once or twice. Just this massive, just heap of mobs were dead. Pulled some more, wings ran out, I was fucking tickling them. I was using everything in my thing, but I didn't have my glowy wings and I was fucking tickling them. And I'm like, that is, this is just awful. This is kind of... This is training me to not do anything until I have wings up when it comes yeah. to general combat. And it just feels like I have two options. Tickle enemies or nuke them from space. It's, it's That's, like, Those are my options and it just fe it never feels great. It's like, I get why the cooldown window should feel good. Like, oh, you're really powerful this time. But that just means you feel weak every other time. It's, it's all things in balance. I think that as times went on, they have tipped the balance towards John Madden cooldown windows. Yeah, uh, where you know, I I feel like maybe we should just bring him down, yep. bring him down a little bit. I think that would uh, I think that'd be better. It would also mean like it, it, he's just said that like this is like they have a problem putting actives in the game because cooldown windows are so powerful yeah. that if you use the active right within the window, you are so above everyone else. Yep. Um, and obviously a degree of that's fine and should be there because skill should matter. But, yeah, I, I think that they maybe would be a bit more freed up in their design space if that was not so much of a thing. And really, it's an extrapolation of the Demon Hunter problem, where I was playing Demon Hunter for a while, and it eventually, to me, just got to the stage of, oh, yeah, it just feels shit whenever I'm not in meta, doesn't it? So, bye. Because they, yeah. you know, they have to do an amount of average DPS in total. <laughs> so the, more, the bigger your burst window is, the less everything else is. And sometimes that can be annoying for fight timings, it can mm -hmm. be annoying for aspects of world content. So yeah. I think there's there's definitely something to that discussion. Yeah. Now, he does say, I don't want to give the impression that we'd never try actives in a tier set, though, just that there's enough added complexity with actives that you'd expect it to have a pretty awesome theme or special situation to be worth the costs or, you know, uh, costs or barriers associated. TLDR, not in the convo for 9.2. They do have things running against them, but maybe they could be there in the future in the right environment and reasons. Yeah. And he says, sure. I know this is a lot, but I really appreciate your questions and hope this answers them in a way that hopefully yields the insights you were uh, hoping. Yeah. You're it, great. Yep. Scars are fantastic work. This is, this is it. This is what we want. Yeah. This is what the community console Brilliant. is here for. Wonderful. Uh, you know, I was just about to default to the, to one of the only praises I can think of, which is God bless. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Sweet. I mean, I was also uh, sc scald. Scald. Yep. Yeah. Scald. Mm -hmm. uh, for your question about Resto Shaman, the driving design and I wait, is this all champ? You know what? Let's just go to the bottom. Yep. It's not a sort of 
Because I don't want to do too many specifics in the stream because it's not really going to apply to that many people here. Yep, of course. Um, sometimes a designer is trying to accent part of their class's identity that's fallen out of favor rather than something that already feels important to them. That distinction can lead to a disconnected feeling, but ultimately we all hope for the same thing, the end fun gameplay that resonates with our class's core fantasies. Oh, that's the same Scarzard who wrote patch notes for Riot. That's Riot Scarzard. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Thanks for pointing that out. Interesting. New dev? New? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know when they left Riot, but... Wow. I didn't know that was the same one. Holy God. Interesting. Very interesting yeah. indeed. So there you go. There's yeah. the there's the oh, web stuff. Yeah, left 2017. 